What's going on Vault Dwellers? It's Top Ranking Noob and I'm back at it again with another helpful video for Fallout 76. It's March 13th and Wild Appalachia is finally released. A day late and a dollar short, but nonetheless it's pretty exciting. We're going to check it out today. But hey, if you guys want to check out some cool Fallout 76 gear, make sure you head on over to U4GM. I'm going to be putting their link down in the description along with the coupon code that's going to be saving you 5%. Now one of the first things I noticed with this new patch is we got some pretty cool stuff in the Atomic Shop here. We got a new power armor, plus there's this uh, party poster. It's not necessarily anything super exciting, but it's free and that's my favorite price. So when you log in, make sure you pick that up. Aside from that, there's some clothes and a statue if you're into that kind of stuff. So if you're into the Atomic Shop, make sure you check it out because we got some new gear there. More importantly, what this patch brings us, though, is a couple of new crafting tables to mix things up in the wastelands. We're going to be provided with a fermenter as well as a brewing station. Now, you can craft these and put them in your camp, but if you go there right away, you're going to realize that they're locked. In order to craft these and put them in your camp, you got to unlock the plans. So in order to unlock the plans, you need to start a quest. There's a new quest. It's going to be a miscellaneous quest. As you get close to this fraternity house, you're going to get the miscellaneous uh, quest called uh, Attend the Fraternity Party. So all you got to do is go to Morgantown. This is going to be just a little, uh, what is it, northeast of the Volt Tech University in Morgantown. Once you get close there, you're just going to see this icon pop up as a miscellaneous quest. Go inside the frat house. Once you spawn inside the house, that miscellaneous quest is going to turn into an official quest wasted on Nuka Shine. What you need to figure out is uh, you got to investigate to find out what exactly these guys were drinking before the, the bombs dropped. Uh, obviously, they went out with a bang. Give a thumbs up to a guy that's hanging out in here as well. He must have been the lone survivor. Uh, so we're going to investigate the house. Now, we actually need to go upstairs in order to complete this investigation, but I decided I'm going to start off by heading downstairs to see what's going on there. And I found a really cool set of glasses. I don't know if these are new to the game or they're just something I've never encountered before. But uh, bottle cap sunglasses. So I figured I'd put those on just to be in the spirit of the uh, event here. They look pretty cool, I guess. I don't think I'll be wearing these for too long. But hey, if you want to look cool, you got to get some bottle cap sunglasses. And just so you look completely cool, if you go check out this laundry room, you're going to find this VTU jacket and jeans that you can throw on to, throw, uh, to, to have a matching set there. Uh, but there's also a hollow tape chilling on this uh, floor next to a couple of dead bodies called the Final Initiation. It has nothing to do with the quest, but if you're already in the neighborhood, it doesn't hurt to pick it up, see what happened. Once you're done goofing off in the basement, you want to head upstairs. There's going to be a computer terminal, and it's kind of hard to miss. There's going to be this vintage Nuka Shine, or Nuka Cola, Nuka, yeah, vintage Nuka Shine hanging out on the table. You're going to want to pick that up. Uh, and you also want to access the computer terminal. Now, I'm sure the computer says a lot of great things in regards to the new events, but I'll leave that for you to read. You want to click on the first option that says Messages, and then when you get to the next page, you click on the first option again, which just says Nuka Shine, and then the quest is going to update. And all it's doing is telling you to drink that bottle of vintage Nuka Shine that you just picked up off the desk. When you consume the vintage Nuka Cola or Nuka Shine, I'm never going to be able to say that, it's going to give you 100% extra melee damage. It's also going to cost less action points points when you sprint and your action points are going to regenerate 50% faster. Now this effect lasts for two minutes. When you first drink it in this quest, it's going to just uh, tell you to, uh, to experience the effects, but you're going to get an optional quest to uh, kill all these party crashers. I decided in the spirit of things I was going to do it unarmed just because I got an extra 100% damage. And you can see that I am not struggling at all with these extremely difficult level 3 party crashers. Uh, they'll spawn in waves just like most things in this game, so you might not see them all right away. Some of them are going to come from downstairs, some of them are going to come from upstairs. But it's a pretty easy optional quest to complete. Now, the side effect is once the effects wear off, I should say, it causes a blackout. So after the two minutes, you're going to black up and you're going to spawn in probably what's going to be a random part of the map. For me, I spawned in the northwestern corner of the map. And for everybody, it might be the same when you're doing this mission or the storyline. But I do have a feeling once you start drinking this vintage Nuka Shine in the future, it may cause you to black out and just spawn in different campsites throughout the map. 
In this case, for me, it was the northwestern side. Let me know if you spawn in the same place down in the comments. I'm kind of curious about that. Nonetheless, more importantly, if you check your uh, mission or, or your, your tasks there, it's going to tell us that what we need to do now is read the label that was on that Nuka Shine um, bottle. And so the label is going to end up in your inventory. If you go to your Pip-Boy, check under Notes. You'll see that Nuka Shine label. It's going to have a little star next to it. What's going to happen is it's going to give us this riddle to give us a hint towards the next step that we need to go in. So this riddle's pretty easy to figure out, but let's go through it. Here it says, At our El Marauder stands a boy, gray and cold. The steps behind him are the first threshold. Oh man, it rhymes. Around the right corner, study the street. Just to the left is the place that we meet. There you can stain your skin with ink. But find the back door and we'll buy you a drink. So this is like a real Dr. Sooth uh, rhyme, but it's pretty straightforward to figure out. Let's go check out what they're talking about. So we're going back to Morgantown and we're going to fast travel to the Voltec University. You probably already figured that out. If you weren't aware, there's a statue in front of the Voltec University and that's probably the cold and, cra uh, cold and gray guy. So here we can see the statue. And what it's saying is the steps behind it are the direction we're going to go. Uh, but they said that we were going to study a street. So we're not going to go inside the university. We're going to tank a right. And it's probably going to be the first street that we come across. And there's the street right there. It wants us to go left down the street. And I think I already see the back door they're talking about. Place where you stain your skin with ink is going to be a tattoo parlor. And so this is Big Al's tattoo parlor. We're going to go in the back door. Uh, riddle so easy that I can figure it out. Nice. Though I shouldn't pat myself on the back too much because once I got inside, it took me longer than I'd like to admit to figure out what to do next. When you get inside, it's just a tattoo parlor, nothing special, bunch of junk laying around that you probably don't really need. But you're going to hear a drunken robot in the background. Uh, it took me forever. I searched high and low and I couldn't figure out what to do. So when I finally did figure it out, it's turned out to be pretty straightforward. Although most things are pretty straightforward once you have the answer. The hint is the Nuka Shine rug sitting in front of this Nuka Cola machine when you first come in. If you open it, it actually opens a secret door. It's got this seriously cool basement that's got a bar in it, some jukeboxes and whatnot. What we're looking for down in this hidden basement is the source of that drunken robot noise. And this is where we're going to come in contact with Biv. Now Biv's going to be the one to give us our first mission that we need to complete in order to get our crafting station plans. As well as get the recipe for the Nuka Shine um, beverage. So this is where he's going to give us the recipe for it. Now Biv is long-winded, so after you interact with him, he's going to talk for a while, and then finally your mission is going to update, and what it's going to do is have you read the ingredients for Nuka Shine inside your inventory. It's going to be another item under notes, and it's going to have that yellow diamond next to it. Now it's going to be part one of two. There's two parts to this. You'll notice the bottom of the page is ripped off, and we're missing one of the ingredients. So we have to find the second part of this list. In order to get part two, we have to make our way into the supply room, which is in the same exact basement. We're going to have to read a terminal in order to open the door. But when we do this, we're going to be surprised. Nothing in life is that simple. It's requiring for us to get a password. So we got to go obtain the password before we can get into the supply room to get the second part of the list. Of course, there's always the other option of waiting for somebody else to come by that already has the password to open it up. Once the door is open, the second part of the list is going to be right there on the table. And you can see the missing ingredient is nuclear material which is pretty easy to find because this room is loaded with nuclear material. All you got to do is pick it up and you're good on that aspect. Nonetheless, I don't want to assume that somebody's going to run by and open this for you or this door for you whenever you're doing this. So let me show you how to get the password to this supply room. So it's pretty straightforward. Northeast of our current location is going to be a little fraternity row area, a bunch of little houses. We can only go into one, but we got the marker for it. It's going to have that yellow diamond on the map. And as we get close, there's going to be a little yellow diamond on this blue door to another fraternity house. So all we're going to do is go inside this building. Once we're inside, we're going to make our way up to the second floor and we're going to find another computer terminal that we need to access. Now it's either on the second floor, I think it's actually on the third floor. So basically just keep going upstairs until you come to the top. You're going to find a couple of rooms. One of them is going to have this computer terminal in it. 
When you access the computer terminal, we're going to read the personal journals and then go down to the fourth option, which says supply room. Now, the password is in the first paragraph. Unlike other quests that you probably experienced throughout Fallout 76, your mission's not going to automatically update just because you read this section. Uh, but the paragraph has the password in it. It's called Shine. You don't really have to remember the password because you're not entering it in. Once you uh, read that section of the journal, you can just go back to the tattoo parlor and you'll be able to open the supply room. Once we got the second part of our list, we got everything we need. All we need to do is actually start uh, collecting all the ingredients in order to make the Nuka shine. Uh, inside this room, we already discovered the wasted uh, the nuclear waste, so we want to pick up about three of those, I believe. From there, we're going to need some boiled water, we're going to need some uh, corn, and then we're going to need some razor grain. And lastly, we're going to need a Nuka Cola Quantum. Now, it's going to show you a location on the map where you can get uh, all of these things. Uh, so you can either follow the, the location on the map, or you can pick these up just about anywhere that you want throughout the game. Now, if you do decide to use the area that's marked on your map for you, do not be fooled. The, uh, the little yellow radius icon on the map is pretty small. It's going to make it look like you need to go inside the house. There's nothing inside the house that you need. If you go next to this barn, you're going to find a water pump as well as a cooking station where you can get boiled water. Again, you could get this anywhere on the map in many different ways. But for the, uh, the sake of this mission, I'll go ahead and get it on this spot of the map. We need two boiled waters, so we need four dirty waters from the pump. What we'll do is we'll go to the cooking station, we'll turn those four dirty waters into two boiled waters. Once you got your boiled water, you can also get your corn and razor grain here. The razor grain does kind of blend into the, uh, the foliage in this area, so it's kind of hard to see, but the corn is pretty straightforward to find. So we're going to need five of each. Just kind of wander around this area, get five corn, five razor grain, and at that point, we're almost good to go. From this point, all we're going to need is the Nuka-Cola Quantum. Now, there's lots of places you could pick this up throughout the game, but if you don't have any and you want to find some quick, the Nuka-Cola plant is probably one of your best options to go. This is one of my older stomping grounds when I used to do a lot of cap stash farming. So if you're in the area and you have seen those videos before, it doesn't hurt to go ahead and check out some cap stashes while you're running in there. For example, we got this trailer right here, and there's a cap stash still hanging out inside the computer. So we grab a fistful of caps there, and as if we got the cap stash cap collector perk card, we can search that again and pick up some more caps. In this case, I got more than 100 caps from that one pool. Nonetheless, we're not here for caps, so let's go see if we can find ourselves a Nuka Cola Quantum. These guys are usually laying all over the place in this area, so it shouldn't be too hard for you to find some. Uh, I'm going to go look up on top of this catwalk because there's usually a cap stash that spawns there as well. And, you know, it doesn't hurt to grab a Nuka-Cola and some caps while we're at it. Um, our COPL makes it a lot easier to get up here, but you don't necessarily need it. And from the looks of it, the cap stash is not there. Oh well, the quantum is, so we'll grab that. And that was our final ingredient that we needed in order to craft this. So now that we got all of that, we're going to make our way back to the tattoo parlor and we're going to go back inside in order to craft our Nuka Shine. I gotta say that slow because I keep wanting to say Nuka Cola Shine and that ain't right. So crafting our Nuka Shine. So we're going to go back to the basement. There's several crafting stations down there that we're going to need to use. We're only going to need to use one of them. Uh, but crafting this is going to be the same as crafting anything else in the game. They haven't gotten carried away with it. Although I do suppose it's helpful if you get out of your power armor so that you can actually craft this stuff. So as we get into the crafting station, it's going to give us several different options in here. We can craft beers, spirits, and wines. For the sake of the mission, it's going to be under spirits. You're going to see that fermentable Nuka Shine. There's other items in here that you can craft, most of which are going to require the same ingredients, mostly corn and razor grain, along with some boiled water and some wood. A couple of them have some special ingredients that you'll have to collect, but nothing too incredibly difficult to get on. So let's craft our fermentable Nuka Shine. You're going to get a little message or a tip up there saying that uh, in order for this to be as good as it gets, it needs to ferment. It will ferment in your inventory, but in order to speed up the process, you want to put it into a fermenter. Something we don't have just yet, but for the sake of this mission, there's a flash fermenter here that we're going to be able to use. There's a little note on there saying don't use it because it's going to blow up in your face, but warnings are for chumps, so we're going to use it anyways. 
So once you read the note, you'll then be able to click on the fermenter and it's going to instantaneously explode, just kind of like the warning mentioned, but it is going to uh, ferment that uh, Nuka Shine. From there, the mission's going to update and just tell you to talk to Biv. So go interact with him. He's going to talk for another long period of time, which is going to make you doubt whether or not you actually interacted with him, but just let him go on his spiel and eventually the mission will update. As the quest complete, you'll see in the top left-hand corner that you've unlocked the ability to make the, the fermenter as well as the brewing station. So you can now go back to your camp and actually put those crafting stations down. Now, in order to, to craft the fermenter, it doesn't take much. It's just a little bit of wood and steel. Just find yourself a favorite place to put it. Me, I'm being kind of a perfectionist there. When it comes to the brew station, there's a few more items that you'll need. One of the which is aluminum, apparently, which I clearly don't keep enough on, on hand. Luckily, there's editing. And like magic, I have enough aluminum, and the time of day just magically changed. So there we go. We got our fermenter and our crafting station. Now, one of the items we got for completing this mission was another jar of Nuka Shine. It is just regular Nuka Shine. You can see that it is giving you some benefits, but if you want it to have its full potency, go ahead and put it in the fermenter. Uh, it seems to convert into to vintage uh, Nuka Shine after about 20 minutes from my test. Uh, so I don't know if that's going to be the same with everything or if it's kind of random. It's probably pretty fair quote, 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, so from there, we have the Nuka Shine ingredient. We're supposed to get a new ingredient or the ability to get a new ingredient every day. So that's going to be a daily quest. Uh, the, other, uh, the other things that we can craft are things that we can find laying around the wasteland. So you can craft the vodka, you can craft the whiskey. I put them in the fermenter for quite a bit and none of them ever went to vintage. So I don't think they will convert to vintage. I'll keep an eye on that just to make sure that is the truth. But I'm thinking the only, uh, the only alcoholic beverages that are going to go to vintage are the ones that we get the ingredients for from these daily quests. So tomorrow I'll go back to Biv and see what else he's got for me see if we can get some other cool ingredients for some cool alcohols so that's it for today's video we got the crafting stations and we got our first daily ingredient from the uh from the event hope you guys found this video helpful and if you do please give this video a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button i appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you all next time